I'll just do my little blurb. <laughs> so welcome to the English book reading session in Kitely and we're reading Five Children and It and we're at chapter six. Okay, April, whenever you're ready, if you'd like to start reading. Okay, uh, hi everybody. Um, chapter six, a castle and no dinner. The others were to be kept in as a punishment for the misfortunes of the day before. Of course, Martha thought it was naughtiness and not misfortune, so you must not blame her. She only thought she was doing her duty. You know, grown-up people often say they do not like to punish you and that they only do it for your own good and that it hurts them as much as it hurts you, and this is really very often the truth. Martha certainly hated having to punish the children quite as much as they hated to be punished. For one thing, she knew what a noise there would be in the house all day, and she had other reasons. I declare, she said to the cook, it seems almost a shame keeping of them indoors this lovely day, but they are that audacious. They'll be walking in with their heads knocked off from some of these days, some of these days, if I don't put my foot down. You make them a cake for tea tomorrow, dear, and we'll have baby along of us soon as we've got a bit forward with our work. Then they can have a good romp with him, out of the way. Now, Eliza, come, get on with them beds. Here is ten o'clock nearly, and no rabbit's coat. People say that in Kent, when they mean, and no work done. So all the works were kept in, but Robert, as I have said, was allowed to go out for half an hour to get something they all wanted. And that, of course, was the day's wish. He had no difficulty in finding the sand fairy, but the day was already so hot that it had actually, for the first time, come out of its own accord, accord, and was sitting in a, in a sort of pool of soft, of soft sand, stretching itself and trimming its whiskers and turning its snail's eyes round and round. Ha, it said when it's, ha, it said when it's left eye so, Robert, I've been looking for you. Where are the rest of you? Not smashed themselves up with those wings, I hope? No, said Robert, but the wings got us into a row, but just like all the wishes I always do. So the others are kept indoors, and I was only let out for half an hour to get the wish. So please let me wish uh, as quickly as I can. Wish away, said the Samit, twisting itself round in the sand. But Robert couldn't wish away. He forgot all the things he had been thinking about, and nothing would come into his head but little things for himself, like candy, a foreign-stamped album, for, or a knife with three blades and a corkscrew. He sat down to think better of things that the others would not have cared for, such as a football or a pair of leg guards, or to be able to lick Simpkins Minor thoroughly when he went back to school. Well, said the Samit at last, you'd better hurry up with that wish of yours. Time flies. I know it does, said Robert. I can't think what to wish for. I wish you could give one of the others their wish without their having to come here to ask for it. Oh, don't. But it was too late. The Samit had blown his, itself out to about three times its proper size, and now it collapsed like a pricked bubble and with a deep sigh leaned back against the edge of the sand pool, 
quite faint, faint with the effort. There, it said in a weak voice, it was tremendously hard, but I did it. Run along home, or they are sure to wish or for something silly before you get there. They were quite sure Robert felt this, and as he ran home, his mind was deeply occupied with the sort of wishes he might find they had wished in his absence. They might wish for rabbits, or white mice, or chocolate, or, find, or a fine day tomorrow, or even, and that was most likely, someone might have said, I do wish to goodness Robert would hurry up. Well, he was hurrying, hurrying up, and so they would have that, had their wish, and the day would be wasted. Then he tried to think what they could wish for something that would, uh, that would be amusing indoors. That had been his own difficulty from the beginning. So few things are amusing indoors when the sun is shining outside and you may go and you may go out however much you want to do so. Robert was okay. running as okay. fast. Oh, sorry, yeah, that's it. Good. <laughs> awesome. Too much well wish. Read. Too I many wish. Read. Too many wishes. Too many wishes as well. The possibilities <laughs> are endless. I mean, you imagine reading this book as a child, as I did. You become terrified of making any wish. <laughs> okay, very nicely read. I and guess this was uh, the purpose. Uh, to, oh, to yes. It was parents. Most, so, yeah. most children's stories are you know, done for, a, you know, are created to teach children a lesson. <laughs> okay, so there's just the one word, April, um, audacious. Uh, okay, I said audacious. Okay, yeah, audacious. Yeah. You were probably thinking of audacity, the, uh, the program. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's <Audacious>. it. <laughs> Does everybody know what audacious means? Have you ever used it in a... In a sense, yeah, because it's uh, it's from uh, Latin and uh, it means courageous. Yeah, uh, it's a little bit more than courageous. It means being um, not risk averse, shall we say. So sometimes in the news you might hear about an audacious robbery. So it's not bravery, but it, it's uh, it's they've done something very bold. Okay. Fearless, if you like. Brutal. Mm, Brutal? Not really. It, it can also mean being a little bit naughty, uh, showing lack, lack of respect. But it, it tends to be bold and fearless. Okay. Devil may care is a nice one. There can be a, an, a level of insolence about it. Absolutely. But devil may care as in, yeah, oh, um... I don't really have a devil may care attitude, if I'm honest, but some people do and that they'll do anything. I mean, we were talking about playground equipment today and then we got on to fairground equipment and um, these amusement parks. And there are amusement park rides I will not go on because I am not audacious, but uh, <laughs> Zom and I think it was Zom and... Yuli were like oh that looks like fun and I'm like oh my goodness <laughs> you never catch me dead on that <laughs> okay so basically just willing to take a risk okay being willing to take a risk okay then um yes fortune favors the brave <laughs> Okay, um, then the other bit, April, is actually just the intonation in um, in the sentence. Okay, so what we've got... Oh, that's strange. Hang on, let me just get rid of that page 163. There. Okay, there's a little dash there. So they're not wishing for something. It's something they could wish for. So you'd read it. Then he tried to think what they could wish for. Something that would be amusing indoors. Right. So he's trying to imagine what could they have wished for. And then he's imagining the sort of things they might have wished for. <laughs> do you want to try it? Do, do you get what I mean, April? So uh, 
it's it's not um, they could wish for something, but they could wish for yes. and th that for yes. something. And, okay, then he tried to sing what they could wish for, something that would be amusing indoors. Perfect. Yes. Okay. So there's a difference to wish for something, or what are they going to wish for? Maybe something that would be amusing indoors. Okay. And then I just want to clarify that everybody knows what it means when it says to put your foot down. If somebody says to you, no, I'm going to put my foot down now. Any idea? I will finish. I will stop. No, not quite. No, no. So, um, for example, let me think. When I'm in a session, I know that sometimes people would like me to stay for longer, especially if they've only just joined, if they've been sort of like an hour late and I go, oh, I'm sorry, I've got to go. The session's ending. I know they would like me to stay for longer. Sometimes they ask me to stay for longer, but I have to put my foot down. I have to be firm and say no. Yeah? So it literally means to say no, no, no negotiation. That's it. What I've just said is what's going to happen. Okay, I put my foot down. Okay, good. Then um, next person to read today is Eleanor. So, Eleanor, uh, okay. as soon as you can are you... ready. Yeah, I can hear you perfectly. Okay, good. Robert, uh, Robert was running as fast as he could. But when he turned the corner that ought to have brought him within sight of the ar architect's nightmare, the ornamental iron work on the top of the house, he opened his eyes so wide that he had to drop into a walk. For you cannot run with your eyes wide open. Then suddenly he stopped short, for there was no house to be seen. The front garden railings were gone too, and where the house had stood, Robert rubbed his eyes and looked again. Yes, the others had wished. There was no doubt about it, and they must have wished that they lived in a castle. For there the castle stood, black and stately, and very tall and broad with battlements and lancet windows and eight great towers and when the garden and the orchard had been there were white things dotted like mushrooms robert walked slowly on and as he got near he saw that these were tents and men in armor were walking about among the tents crowds and crowds of them Oh, said Robert fervently, they have, they've wished for a castle, and it's being besieged, it's just like that sand fairy, I wish we'd never seen the beastie thing. At the little window above the great gateway, across the moat that now lay, where the garden had been but half an hour ago, someone was waving something paid as scarlet. Robert thought it was one of Sidney's handkerchiefs. They had never been white since the day when he had upset the bottle of combined toning and fixing solution into the drawer where they were. Robert waved back and immediately felt that he had been unwise. For the signal had been seen by the besieging force and two men in steel caps were coming towards him. They had high brown boots on their long legs, and they came towards him with such great strides that Robert remembered the shortness of his own legs and did not run away. He knew it would be useless to himself, and he feared it might be irritating to the foe. So he stood still and the two men seemed quite pleased with him. By my halidom, said one, a brave valet uh, this. 
Robert felt pleased at being called brave, and somehow it made him feel brave. He passed over the ballot. It was the way people talked in historical romances for the young, and he knew uh, and uh, he knew, and it was evidently not meant for rudeness. He only hoped he would be able to understand what they said to him. He had not been always able quite to follow the conversation, conversations in the historical romances for the young. His garb is strange, said the other. Some outlandish teachery belike. Say, lad, what brings thee hither? Robert knew this meant. Now then, youngster, what are you up to here, eh? So he said, If you please, I want to go home. Go then, said the man in the longest boots. None hindereth, and not lets us to follow Zooks. He added in a cautious undertone, I misdoubt me, but he beareth tidings to the besieged. Where dwellest thou, young knave? inquired the man with the largest steel cup. Over there, over there, said Robert, and directly he said he had said it, he knew he ought to have said yonder. Ah, say it so, rejoined the longest boots. Come hither, boy. This is matter for our leader. And to the leader Robert was dragged forth, forth with by the reluctant ear. The leader was the most glorious creature Robert had ever seen. He was exactly like the pictures Robert had so often admired in the historical romances. He had armor and a helmet and a horse and a crest and feathers, and a shield and a lance and a sword. His armor and his weapons were all, I am almost sure, of quite different periods. The shield was 13th century, while the sword was of the pattern used in the Peninsular War. The cuirass was of the time of Charles I. were very grand, three red running lions on a blue ground. The tents were of the latest brand approved, by, approved of by our modern war office, and the whole appearance of camp, army and leader might have been a shock to some. But Robert was dumb with admiration, and it all seemed to him perfectly correct, because he knew no more of heraldry or archaeology than the gifted artist who usually drew the pictures for the historical romances. The scene was indeed exactly like a picture. He admired it all so much that he felt braver than ever. Very good. Well done. Okay. Oh. <laughs> so, as you say, some interesting vocabulary in this week's. <laughs> okay. Um, a couple of words. So let me go through the words first. The first one is broad, like not like road. Yes, we say road, but it's ah, broad. broad. Yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah, broad. Like or. So try it. Broad. 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 That's better. And then the next one, treachery. It's not like reach. Ah, teach. treacherous. Treach. Okay. Yeah, treacherous. Yeah. Treachery. Um, yeah. That's about it, really. Treacherous and treachery. <laughs> and then the last one, uh, when we've got the one or the two, we say we use the ordinal numbers. Uh, so Charles the first. Yeah, yeah. I corrected myself. Oh, oh it broke off actually. Um, I had a little. I see. A little moment, and I couldn't hear anything, so I didn't catch that. Sorry, but try it anyway. Charles the first. Ah, oh, Charles the first. Yeah, yeah it's obvious. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> now the next bit. It's just about intonation again. So, when, um, when you're saying, uh, when you're comparing two things. So, the magazine on the table. It's like 
that magazine next to it. That's comparing two things and saying they're similar. But this context, he's not saying that they're similar. He's actually being a bit mean about the stem fairy. Um, if you say to somebody, oh, that's just like you, it doesn't mean you're comparing them to something else or someone else. It means you're, you're saying their behaviour is typical and it's usually negative. So here he'd say it with a little bit of annoyance. It's just like that sand fairy. I wish we'd never seen the beastly thing. I, I got it. I think uh, it's just like that sand fairy. I wish we'd never seen the beastly thing. That's it. Yeah. Because if you just said it's just like that sand fairy, then yeah, it's, it's um, like neutral. that thing, yeah, that sand uh, yeah. fairy is just like that other sand fairy it's comparing. This is just, oh, what typical behaviour. And he's annoyed, of course, because uh, the wish went yeah, wrong again. Of <laughs> okay, the next one, you've got a double comma. It is always a bit awkward. So, it was the way people talked in historical romances for the young. He knew, and it was evident, evidently not meant for rudeness. Okay. <laughs> so he knew that that's what it was and he knew that it so that he knew goes to the first part of the sentence and the second part it's like it was the way people talked then he knew that and he also knew it wasn't meant for rudeness so that he knew kind of stands on its own because it's joined to both it's referring to both parts of the sentence do you want to try it uh, okay it was the way people talk the, it was the way people talked in historical romances for the young. He knew. And it was evidently not meant for rudeness. Very good. Well done. Okay, the last one. Um, when you said it, it was like you were saying Robert was dumb. But he's not. Okay, he's struck dumb with admiration. So, not but Robert was dumb with admiration. It's but Robert was dumb with admiration. Okay. Uh, Robert was done with admiration. That's it, yeah. The way you said it, you, it sounds like you're trying to say Robert's done. We know he's quite a clever young man. So... Uh... <laughs> oh, of course. Very clever. Yay! <laughs> okay, well done. Any questions? Uh, yeah, some question, Linz. Uh, let's see. What was that again? What does... Uh, Halidom, is that Holidom maybe? Oh, it's just uh, part it's of his uniform. Notes. Oh, sorry. Yeah, carry on, Eleanor. It's in my notes, uh, AP. Have you got uh, the holy. link? Yeah. Have you got the link? Because I, yeah. I, I, I know that April, um, Eleanor's done a lot on the notes here because there's a lot of archaic words or historical words, I should say. They're not really archaic because uh, people still dress up like this. <laughs> But they do it for fun, not because they're part of an army of, uh, they're not part of the peasant army. <laughs> and a farlet, what is the farlet here? Uh, it's like Paige, uh, so a uh, boy who assists uh, uh, oh, okay. uh, a knight. Uh -huh. So let me give you the but, link, uh... everybody, because I think, I think Eleanor has, um... oh, you've done it. Oh, well. There you go. I'm so yeah, slow. Yeah. I'm so slow. And, uh... and what does it mean? With, is that is that the the that uh, it the, that uh, said none hinder us and not yeah not I know nothing. Yeah, not is uh, nothing, but this is none hinder us. Nobody's stopping you. <laughs> To hinder so, somebody. Like, to hinder. Uh, uh, just uh, archaic endings. This we so uh, in 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 olden days there were lots of these and thous and uths in in old not not old English but as children we played with that language and we would try and speak in that sort of Shakespearean way. Uh, praise Siri. Oh, Moss Moss is joining us. He'll have to listen, though. We won't be able to um, offer him a reading. But anyway, and yes, Zoots, does. Oh, Zoots, yeah. 
Did you did you look up Zoots, Eleanor? Good luck. I tried it. by uh, no, I haven't found it's it. It's just an exclamation. Oh, yeah. uh, Zutalo. I see. <laughs> okay, you might know Zutalo. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it's just <laughs> yeah. like uh, borrowing. <laughs> It's just an exclamation of surprise. Okay. Okay, thank you. Good, good. Well done. Okay, so um, let me see who's up next to read. Shiny. Shiny, shiny. Are you ready to read? Hello. Ah, hello. Thank goodness. Okay. Good. So, uh, whenever you're ready. Sorry, I was. <laughs> yeah, I was asking you, uh, where should I start? Come hither, lad. Page hundred and sixty-eight. I mean, come hither, lad. You mean that? Yep. Okay. Uh, come hither that, say the glorious leader, when the man in Cromwellian steel caps, steel caps, had said a few low eager words, and he took off his helmet, helmet, because he could not see properly with it on. He had a tight face and long fair hair, have no fear. Thou shalt take no scat, <coughs> he said. Robert was glad of that. He wondered what scat was and if it was nastier than the Senna tea, which he had to take sometimes. Unfold thy tail without alarm, said the leader kindly. Whence comest thou? And what is thy intent? My what? said Robert. What seekest thou to accomplish? Accomplish? What is thine errand that thou wanderest here alone among these rough men at arms? Poor child, thy mother's heart aches for thee for thee and now I'll warrant me I don't think so said Robert you see she doesn't know I'm out the leader wiped away a manly tear exactly as the leader in a historical re romance would have done said and, and said fear not to speak the truth, my child, thou hast not to fear from Ulfric the Talbot. Robert had a wild feeling that this glorious leader of the be singing party, being himself part of a wish, would be able to understand better than Martha. Martha or the gypsies, or the policeman in Rochester, or the clergyman man of yesterday. The true tale of the wishes and the summit. The only difficulty was that he knew he could never remember enough quarters and this best means and things like that to make his talk sound like the talk of a boy in a historical romance. However, he began boldly enough with a sentence straight out of Ralph the Cursey or the boy Crusader, Crusader he said. Uh, gramercy for the, thy courtesy, fair sir knight. The fact is, 
is like this, and I hope you are not in a hurry, because the story is rather a brother. Uh, father and mother are away, and when we were done playing in the sun piece, we found a summit. I quite the mercy, a summit, summit, yeah, summit eight, said the knight. Yes, a sort of of fairy or enchant enchanter. Yes, that's it, an enchanter. And he said we could have a wish every day, and we wished first to be beautiful. That wish was scared, sc scars granted, muttered one of the men at arms, looking at Robert, when, when, who went on as if he had not heard, though he thought. The remark, very rude indeed. And then we wished for money, treasure, you know, but we couldn't spend it. And yesterday we wished for wings, and we got them. And we had a breathing time uh, to begin with. Like thy speech is strange and uncouth, said Sir Ulfric the Tabu. Repeat thy words, what hast thou? A reaping, I mean a jolly. No, we were contented with our lot. That's what I mean. Only after that we got into an awful fix. What is a fix? A fairy? A fray? Mayhap? No, not a fray. A, a, a tight place. A dungeon, a lust for thy youthful feathered limbs, limbs, said the knight with polite sympathy. Well done. It wasn't a... Okay, okay. Oh. yep, yep, that's it. Good, good, good. Okay, super. Um, let's have a look at your corrections. Hang on a second. There you go. Okay, so we'll start with the first one, and here we'd say scathe. Now, normally, nowadays, you'd, you'd hear the term unscathed rather than scathe, which means uninjured. So I can only think that scathe is slightly old-fashioned, and it means you'll, you'll, you won't be injured, okay? But if you emerge from something unscathed, it means you were not hurt in any way, okay? Yeah, harmed. And uns but scathe, I... I can't remember hearing, but unscathed you will hear. So uh, he was unscathed, as in he wasn't hurt. Okay, so try it shiny scathe. Yeah, and try unscathed, which you're more likely to uh, hear. Unscathed. Unscathed. Good. Now the next one, I'm not sure what word you read. Maybe you're reading from a different version, uh, but. In my version, it says medicine. So you take medicine to get well, yeah? Medicine. Try it. Medicine. Yay. Good, good, good. Um, the next one, errand. An errand. When you have something er to do. Errand. When you have something to do that somebody else has asked you to do it, sometimes for a little bit of money, we call it an errand. Try it. Errand. That's it. Then besieging. Is the siege a siege? Yeah, if you lay siege to somewhere, you stop people leaving or entering, you block the food. And if you're besieged, um, in that context, it means you've got an army stopping you leaving the place that you're in or getting food or having any deliveries. So you don't want to be besieged if you're waiting for an Amazon package. Okay, <laughs> so besieging, try it. Besieging. Good. And then the next one, any Star Trek fan will know this one. To boldly go when no man has gone before. So it's boldly, bravely, boldly. Try it. Boldly. Yeah, not boldly, just boldly. Boldly. That's better. Yeah. 
Then a crusader with an A, long A, crusader. Crusader. Yeah, the crusades were a particular time in history, the crusades. And the people, the soldiers who fought in those wars were called crusaders. Uh, then it's a breather, as in it's, it basically takes a long time to tell the story. A breather. Try it. Breather. Yeah. Another one that's in common use, scarce. When something's scarce, scarce. you don't have much of it. Scarce. So like air. Scarce. scarce. Try it. Scarce. Uh, scares. No, that's it. Yeah, good. Scare is t something totally different. To scare someone, to make them frightened. Scarce means um, you don't have much of something. Okay. Then uncouth. Uncouth. Yes, it means not very um, refined. Okay. So your speech is uncouth. Uh, maybe not educated, not refined, um, yeah. And the last one, unscathed. Oh no, that's no, no, we've got that one. That's no, okay, forget it. That's from scathed, unscathed. <laughs> okay, any questions? Everybody okay? Yes. <laughs> it's like it's like tossing a coin. I only do it from when people say to me, you can't really work out who's going to get the tough part. But Reem's probably quite pleased that you've read that part shiny. <laughs> Honestly, um, this sort of knightly speech, it, you'll find a lot of it in the romance poetry. And we do, as children, we'll play with it. Pray thee, Syra. Uh, wherefore goest thou? <laughs> it's probably not historically accurate, but as children, people do play like that. <laughs> Especially if something like Robin Hood's on the television or, you know, that kind of thing can set off these memes in school and everybody's syrahing and theeing and thouing everywhere. Okay, so, yes, exactly, you varlet. <laughs> okay, Reem, you are next to read. Are you ready? Oh, Enchanter, sorry, Rara. Uh, an Enchanter is somebody who casts magic. Okay, so maybe a magician or a wizard. And an Enchantress is uh, a witch or a, a sorceress. Yeah, so enchanted, somebody who casts magic, okay? Now you can say enchanted, which means you're very charmed by something. Almost like it's, I went into, there was a garden open day and we took our friends there and because it was a private garden, normally you wouldn't be allowed to walk round, but it was a garden open day. So they had opened their garden to the public and I was enchanted by it. It was lovely, <laughs> but it wasn't my, it wasn't cast by a witch or anything. It was just beautifully done. But an enchanter is somebody who uses wizardry. So Gandalf was an enchanter. Okay, <laughs> you're welcome. Is a witch? Is a witch always a that female? Would be an enchantress. Or yes. Yeah. Yeah, which is always a female. Yeah, which is tend to be female wizards, sorcerers, males, enchantress, and enchanter is male, masculine. Enchantress is female, feminine. Okay. Shiny, take the mic. Shiny. Uh, hello. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, Thank hello. you. I I have a question. I I joined a, a reading club, and uh, uh, they call us. Everyone is I uh, was an enchanter. I I don't understand. Oh, which is the name they've chosen? <laughs> Every time they have they they got something to say, they will say, "Okay, every enchanter." Every enchanter, uh, I'm going to say 
like that. Okay. Is that right? I, I, I'm not sure if that's what they were saying. Are you sure they weren't saying engender or something, maybe? Engender, yeah, because they, they sent me a letter and they also write it in, in this word. Okay. So I was um, confused. Was it written CH Enchanter? On, yeah, C -H -A -N -T. Uh, there is enchanté. There is enchanté. Sometimes people use the French enchanté, which means please, you know, I'm charmed. I'm pleased to meet you. Enchanté, and that but that can be a bit pretentious if they were. Or there's the word engender, which can also mean gives rise to feelings. I don't know why they would. Um, if you can take a scan of the letter or give, send it to me in the forum an actual example of a full sentence i can try and make sense of it but yeah <laughs> i don't know okay you're welcome i couldn't really i don't know why yeah you can say thank you. i can't really help you because i don't i don't get the context in which they would use that but you can send me a full sentence or a a, a part of the letter in the forum and I'll try and make sense of it. Try and see what they were trying to do, okay? <laughs> okay, so Reem is up next to read. Reem, are you ready to start? Yes. Excellent, uh, okay, when, whenever you want. Which, tell you which, uh, tell you which, uh, which was, yeah, or from and then? Um, you will be reading from, hang on a second. Um, Oh, where was it? A dungeon? Yeah, a dungeon. Alas for my... Uh, no, a dungeon? No, no, no. Alas? It wasn't a dungeon. Yeah, a dungeon? Is that it? No? It wasn't a dungeon. Yes. That's the line yes, you, 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 you could... You should yeah. begin from. Yes. It wasn't a dungeon. We just just encountered uh, an uh, under uh, and 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 deserve it mis for uh, misfortunes. Robert explain uh, it, and to today we are uh, we are. Push it, push it by not beginning allowed to go out. That's where I live. He uh, he uh, he pointed to the castle. The other are in there, and they're uh, and they're not allowed it to go out. It's all the uh, peasants. I mean uh, the. Uh, in shirts, fa faults. I wish we'd never seen him. He is an init uh, in in initiator initiator of men. Oh yes, of might and mine uh, rather. And so, and the though and so. So, the the uh, they it is the spells of the in in sh in shirt, not in in sh in center, home. So 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 hast angry that have lent string a string to uh, the. Uh, Thinking, uh, thinking party that the gallant leader, but now says uh, that Wally Fark, Wally Fark, do tap talipt needs no insert and to lead him to lead his flowers to Vector. No, I am sure you don't, said Robert. With, with hostile co cost, courtist 
cure cure teeth? Of course not. You wouldn't. You know. But all the same, it's partly his fielt fielt. But where must to Palam? You couldn't have done anything if it hadn't been for us. How now? Fault boy. Fault boy. Ask it, sir. Wolfric. Uh, half, half, half tea. They speech in dark and icky. Cares. Uh, Cow court courteous and un un unrival unrival me this rightly R rightly rightly oh said Robert this partly of course you don't know it but you aren't not really at all you are only here because the others must have been adept enough to it for a castle and when the sun sets you'll just vanish away and it it'll be all right well done the okay. captain okay. and no, the stop. man at at arms except Exchanged gallants uh, uh, at first betting, and then stern, stern, thinner, thinner, as the longest pouts men said. You are my noble lord, the honor arcan does. But think madness to escape from uh, other uh, glasses, shall we not paint him? Well done. Okay, so yeah, not all not all the most difficult stuff was uh, in the Chinese session section. <laughs> okay, so let's yes. start with. Um, the individual words. You do get a smiley though. You collect. You corrected yourself once. That was very good. But we'll start with yeah. to encounter is the verb. To encounter. Encountered. To meet. To encounter. Encountered. Try it. In encounter. Encounter. Yes. That's encountered. It. Encountered. Encounter. And again. Yeah. Look at the syllables. You've got N, you've got count. So you know N, count, and then you've just got the ending, er, uh, or in this <laughs> case, plus the um, ED ending, which means it's in the past. You end up with encountered, encountered. Encountered. That's it. And it's the same with the next one. Don't get too confused when you see lots of syllables we've got deserve yeah. to deserve something yeah which means deserve. whatever you got you deserved it it, it was uh, something you'd earned to deserve something and then you've got undeserved so you've got un and the ed ending to show it's in the past undeserved try it un undeserved That's undeserved it. good and then you've got another one that's just from the verb to explain so I try to explain the pronunciation. I try to explain the meaning. And you've just got the ED ending that puts it into the past. It's a silent E. Explained. Try it. Explained. That's it. Explained. And then another silent E from to punish. Put it into the past. Punished. Try it. Punished. Pun Punished. That's Punished. it. Then another verb to allow, another silent e, allowed. Allowed. That's allowed. It. Then there's a word here that is a made up word, but we've had it often, so try to listen to other people's corrections. The Samiad. The Samiad. The fairy. The, yeah? Sam. 
Samiyet. That's Samiyet. it. It's a word you just got to learn for me. this book. <laughs> you yeah. only need it for this book. You'll probably never need it again. Unless you meet a sand fairy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then again, listen to other people's corrections because sometimes it can help you in your own or other people reading. This is Enchanters. Yeah, yeah. yeah? Enchanters. Mm -hmm. Enchanters. That's Enchanters. It, yeah. I'm, I'm trying. I know, I know. For two this word, but again, now, I feel wrong. Remember, I said at the beginning there's a lot of these and thous. So, although we do say though, this isn't though, this is thou. It's you in the very formal, old English formal for you was thou. Okay? So, thou. Yeah, yeah, thou. That's thou. it. Yeah, thou. thou. Uh, yeah. Then deemest, we wouldn't put EST ending on this anymore. It's just deem to understand, to, to work out something. Yeah. Uh, deemest is just old English. Add an EST, it sounds like old English. Okay. Yes. Okay. Deemest. Yeah, that's it. Then besieging, to besiege, besieging. Besieging. Yes. Besieging. That's it. And this is a common word to aid somebody, aid to offer help, aid. Aid. Yeah. aid. If somebody offers to aid you, they're offering to help you. OK. Um, yeah. You've got to follow and then you've got the person who follows is a follower. And in plural, F followers, followers, not flowers, followers. Yeah, yeah. Followers. That's it. Followers. Good. And then victory. V for victory. Victory. Yeah, that's it. Good. Victory. <laughs> then we've got a hasty courtesy. Hasty courtesy. Yeah. He hasty. Okay. Hasty. Okay. Okay. No. Yeah. Close your eyes. Hasty. Don't don't look yeah. at the words. Hasty. Hasty. Yeah, and then don't look at the word, just close your eyes. Courtesy. Courtesy. Yeah. Hasty courtesy. That's it. Yeah. Sometimes when you're looking at the word, the letters will just muddle up in your brain. So sometimes it's worth just listening without looking at the word and then just repeating the sounds. Okay? Yes. Just to retrain I your am, brain. Uh, when... <laughs> Yes, when I saw a long, uh, a long, uh, a more letters, a long word, I, I become confused. I know, I know, but it's your brain that's confused. You can pronounce the words, just don't let the letters yeah. confuse you, okay? Then we've got okay. fault, somebody's fault. Who's at fault? Who fault. did it? Fault. Fault. That's it, fault. yeah. Uh, blame. So when you find who's at fault, you can blame them. Blame. Blame. That's it. And haughtily. If you do something haughtily. Sometimes I might sound haughty when I'm speaking because I speak in a posh accent. She said haughtily. <laughs> so haughtily. Haughtily. That's haughtily. it. So when, when you say something like, oh, my God. Goodness, I can't believe you just did that. <laughs> okay, the next one is a fun word, a riddle. Riddle. R riddle. That's riddle. it. Perfect. And then nobody here is an idiot, so we don't have any idiots here. Idiots. I idiots. Yeah. Idiots. And then if you glance at something, you look at it quite short, in a short way, just a quick look. Glances. Glances. Yay. Glances. And then pity or pitying. Pitying. That's pitying. It. Um, a young boy um, or chi a young child who looks like they might be poor might be called an urchin. 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 Yeah, urchin normally, not urchin. Mm, that's interesting. Let me just check urchin. that. I say urchin. Yeah. But you might be right. There might be in the American. There might be. No, no, it's definitely urchin. An urchin. Urchin. That's it. 
And then if you pretend something, you feign it to feign. Feign. Yeah. Feign. So to pretend, if you like. Okay. And then yes. bind. Not bind, bind. 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 Yeah. Bind. If you bind somebody, you tie them up. Bind. I've got bind. bindweed in my garden and I'm trying to pull it up and it, it just... Because I was away for three weeks, the bindweed grew everywhere. <laughs> it's over every single plant, trying to tie up the plants. I don't know why it does it, but it does. So I've got a lot of gardening to do. <laughs> and then your smiley is for courteous. So courteous. Courteous. Very courteous. Good. Well done. Um, Thank you very much, Lee. You're welcome. You're welcome. April has asked a question, uh, like Aid. I say Aid rather than Aid. I say Aid, but I don't know which is correct. Hello, Moss. <laughs> Hello, Lee. Hi. <laughs> Okay, so so. <laughs> Any questions, anybody? It's like you just popped up on my screen. <laughs> it's like you're looking out of the screen yes. at me. <laughs> Any questions, anybody, from that part of the text? A hasty courtesy. Um, it means just being courteous, but very quickly. Anything hasty is quick. OK, so a hasty courtesy would be if I was in a hurry and I went into a room and I was walking through the room, but somebody was in the room, I might say good morning and I'd leave. <laughs> but I wouldn't want to be rude by ignoring their presence. So as I was walking through the room, I'd just go good morning and that would be a hasty courtesy. OK. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay, then Rara, it is actually your turn to read now. Um, I, whenever you're ready. Okay, I am ready. Awesome. Can you hear me? Yep, very clear. Good. Okay. Yeah. okay, thank you. So, hello everyone. If I'm not mistaken, I should start from I am not uh, no more mad than you are. Okay. Uh, I am no more mad than you are, said Robert angrily. Perhaps not so much. Only I was an idiot to think you'd understand anything. Let me go. I haven't done anything to you. I'm so glad I parked at the front today. That's coming fast. Wither. Did we move our cars at the front of the building? Just go. Uh, like. It's not going to take much. Do you hear me? Because there are some, like, noises. Look at this, it's coming fast. Okay. Yeah, Weezer asked the to night. Who seemed to have believed all the enchanter no. story oh. till it came yeah. to his own share in oh. it? Weezer wouldst thou wend? Oh. Home, of course. Robert don't, pointed don't, to no, the don't, castle. Don't, just let it go. He's the air out of to carry news of soccer? Nay. All right then, said Robert, struck by a sudden idea. But then let me go somewhere else. His mind sought eagerly among the memories of the historical romance. Sir Wolfric de Talbot he said slowly, should sing full scorn to, to keep a chap, I mean one who has done him no hurt, when he wants to cut off quietly, I mean to depart without violence. This is my face, the shrew the for a knave, replied Sir Wolfric, but the appeal seemed to have gone home. Yet thou sayest Zeus, he added thoughtfully, 
Go where thou wilt, he added nobly. Thou art free. Wolfric the Talbot warreth not with babes, and Jack in here shall bear the company. All right, said Robert wildly. Jakin will enjoy himself, I think. Come on, Jakin. Sir Wolfric, I salute thee. He saluted after the modern military manner and set off running to the sand pit, Jakin's long boots keeping up easily. He found the fairy. He dug it up. He woke it up. He implored it to give him one more wish. I've done two today already, it grumbled, and one was as stiff a bit of work as ever I did. Should I continue reading? Oh, that's it. No, no, carry on till I tell you to stop. <laughs> You've got two more minutes to go, okay? <laughs> Can anyone hear me? I'm very yeah, sorry. No, ca carry on. Carry yeah, on till I tell you to stop. You've got two more minutes, okay? Okay, because uh, actually I hear like uh, you and some other groups. That's why it's quite difficult to me uh, to hear. If it's uh, possible, uh, you can like chat. Uh, it will be even better. Like... Uh, type some words in the chat <laughs> because okay, I, you thought you were on your own. <laughs> I can hear two two people talking. <laughs> I don't yeah, know I don't why know but that's from. I don't know where that's from. It's nobody here. It must be somewhere near no. you or somewhere Yes, your maybe. Connection. It's very strange. Very strange. It's only coming through your microphone though. Nobody else's. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, shall I finish or just uh, read the last line? It's up to you. When you're um, in these okay. sessions, you can say, okay, that's enough, or I'll tell you when it's enough. It's up to you, okay? Okay, I hear you so I can continue if you allow me. <laughs> okay, of course you can continue. I'll tell you when to stop. Okay, okay? thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Oh, do, 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 do said Robert, while Jakin looked on with an expression of open-mouthed horror at the strange beast that talked, and gazed with its snail's eyes at him. Well, what is it? snapped the Samid with cross sleepiness. I wish I was with the others, said Robert, and the Samid began to swell. Robert never thought of wishing the castle and the siege away. Of course he knew they had all come out of a wish, but swords and daggers and pikes and lances seemed much too real to be wished away. Robert lost consciousness for an instant. When he opened his eyes, the others were crowding round him. We never heard you come in, they said. How awfully jolly of you to wish it to give us our wish. Of course we understood that was what you'd done. But you ought to have told us. Suppose we'd wish something silly. I guess that uh, okay. it will be enough That's because... Enough? Okay, good. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. And I'm sorry because I've heard like two talkings <laughs> i don't yeah. maybe that you've got a crossover on your connection on your yeah. microphone from somewhere else it's very yeah, never sorry that for before. that it's like having little ghosts in the room but uh, anyway it's fine don't <laughs> oh worry, my god I could now hear... now the music <laughs> <laughs> i could hear you fine it's, i could hear you very really well funny. <laughs> <laughs> and you did very well it was very good very good reading. um so there's just one word uh, and one little phrase, okay? So the, the word is nobly. He said nobly. It's a little bit like haughtily, but nobly means in a way that makes you sound noble. It makes you sound um, self, sort of self-sacrificing. Tis a far, far better thing that I do now <laughs> than I have ever done before. <laughs> so really high... Um, 
high quality, if you like, as if you're doing something self-sacrificing, something noble, something grand, if you like. OK, so nobly. Can you hear that? Oh, Rara can't hear me. Oh, no. Can anybody hear me? Have I lost voice? Yeah. Yes, I hear you, Ian. OK. Can you 111 if you can hear me? Because I think it must be Rara's connection. She's got some weird connections, uh, obviously, today. Ghosts in the machine. OK, so um, you'll be able to... <laughs> How strange. You'll be... Oh. You'll be able to hear it in the recording. <laughs> you have ghosts <laughs> in your machine. <laughs> okay, so nobly. And then the bit, uh, the little phrase there is just this to my face. Uh, when you do something to somebody's face, it doesn't mean you alter their face. It means you do it in front of them. Yeah. She said it right to my face, as in she said it right in front of me. I could hear everything they said about me. OK, so he's a bit insulted. You just said that to my face. Uh, nothing to do with the face, just your presence in your presence. OK. OK, OK, Traum. Oh, no, no worries. No worries. It's your turn to read now. So you haven't actually missed anything. Um, remember, if you are um, inactive for a while, the system might throw you out. So if you just mm -hmm. don't type anything uh, or move, it might think that you've mm -hmm. left yourself in here by accident. It might throw, or it just might be your connection. Uh, Rara herself has had a right bit of fun and games today. She's got Spanish people talking to her. And we don't know where they are. Um, Rara, if you're watching the recording, what can happen if you have something like Skype open or Discord or another chat program, there can be crossover. OK, or it might just be your connection um, has a crossover as well. I'd look into it if I were you. Because it means you're sharing your bandwidth, for one thing. <laughs> you don't have anything open. It must be your connection then. Weird. Oh, that's really freaky. It's. I can remember we had used to have crossed lines um, on the telephone, like on the landline, on old telephones. You used to sometimes get crossed lines. Um, but I haven't never had it on the internet. Yeah. That's weird. <laughs> Maybe you're lucky. Yes. <laughs> Do you speak Spanish? Can you tell what they're saying? That's the thing. <laughs> OK, so Traum, um, you probably need to know where you're reading from then. Yes. All right. OK. Um, it's from page 175 from Silly, said Robert, very crossly indeed. OK. OK, got it. Good. OK, whenever okay. you're ready. <clears throat> yes, I am. Silly, said Robert, very crossly indeed. How much sillier, sillier could you have been? I'd like to know. You nearly settled me. I can't tell you. Then he told his story, and the others admitted that it certainly had been rough on him. But he praised his courage, courage and cleverness, cleverness, uh, so much that he presently got back his lost temper and felt braver than ever, and consented to be captain of the besieged force. We haven't done anything yet, said Anfia comfort, comf, comfortly. We waited for you. We are going to shoot at them through these little loopholes with the bow and arrows uncle gave you, and you shall have first shot. I don't think I would, said Robert cautiously. You don't know what they are like near to? They've got real bows and arrows and awful length and swords and pikes and daggers and all sorts of sharp things. 
they're all quite, quite real. It's not just a, a picture or a vision or anything. They can hurt us or kill us even. I shouldn't wonder, I can feel my ear all sore yet. Look here, if you explore the castle, because I think we'd better let them alone as long as they let us alone. I heard that Chuckin man say they weren't going to attack till just before sundown. We can't be getting ready for the attack. Are there any soldiers in the castle to defend it? We don't know, said um, Cyril. You see, directly I'd wished we were in a besieged castle. Everything seemed to go upside down. And when it came straight, we looked out of the window and saw the camp and things and you. And of course, we kept on looking at everything. Isn't this room jolly? It's a real as real. It was. It was square with stone walls four feet thick and great beams for ceiling. A low door at the corner led to a flight of steps up and down, up and down. The children went down. They found themselves in a great arched gatehouse. The enormous doors were shut and barred. There was a window in a little room at the bottom of the round turret up which the stair wound rather larger than the other windows and looking through it they saw that the drawbridge was up and the portcullis down. The moat looked very wide and deep. Opposite the great door that led to the mo moat was another great door with a little door in it. The children went through this and found themselves in a big a uh, courtyard with, with the great grey walls of the castle rising dark and heavy on all four sides. Near the middle of the courtyard stood Martha, moving her right hand backwards and forwards in the air. The cook was stooping down and moving her hands, also in a very curious way. But the oddest and at the same time most terrible thing was the lamp who was sitting on nothing, about three feet from the ground, laughing happily. The children ran towards him, just as Anthea was reaching out her arms to take him. Martha said crossly, let him alone, do miss when he is good. But what's he doing, said Anthea, doing? Why a setting in his high chair as good as gold, a precious watching me doing of the ironing? Get alone with you, do my irons cold again. She went towards the cook and seemed to pock, to pock an invisible fire with an unseen poker. The cook seemed to be putting an unseen dish into an invisible oven. Run alone with you, do, she said. I am behind hand, behind, behind hand, as it is. You won't get no dinner if you come a uh, hindering a uh, hindering of me like this. Come, off you goes, or I'll pin a uh, dis dish dish this cloth this cloth to some of your tails. You are sure the lamb's all right? Asked Jane anxiously. Right, as nine pence if you don't come. Uh, if you don't come unsettling of him, I thought you'd like to be rid of him for today. But take him if you want him, for gracious sake. Very good. No. no. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <Ooh>. Well done. <laughs> Sorry, I tried to stop you a little earlier, and um, uh, my mic wasn't working, but it's back now. So. And I didn't stop. <laughs> no, well, you couldn't have heard me, so <laughs> I've got no green okay. lines for some reason. But uh, never mind, it's working now. Well done. Uh, a couple of individual words. Let's go through those first. This is one of your favourites, I know, but it's uh -huh. not comfortable. It's comfortably. 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 Not tibbly, tubbly. It's your schwa, your favourite. Comfortable, comfortably. Comfortably. That's it. <laughs> I hate this word. I know, oh. I do. And then daggers with an A. Ah. 
a dagger. Is this a dagger I see before me? So daggers. Is it anything to do with dig? Uh, to dig? No, 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 no. A dagger is a knife. The dagger it's a knife. Is a knife oh, okay. that killed uh, it, uh, the, the bloody dagger. Uh, and if you look daggers at somebody, if you look daggers at someone, you look at them in a very negative way, a very hateful way. OK, but dagger and daggers. A dagger. That's daggers. It. Eleanor has a dagger. Yes. Watch out for her in Second Life. <laughs> OK. OK, the next one. Uh, bard. Barred. Yeah, a barred. bar across the door. So a door can be locked, but if it's locked and barred, it means there's a, it's locked. And also there's maybe a big sh um, piece of wood barring it as well. It's an extra bit of security to bar some, uh, to bar the door. Or maybe you've put a bolt, yeah? a big iron bolt can also bar a door. OK, um, next one. A little bit of castle vocabulary, castle architecture, the portcullis, the portcullis. Colors as the as the colors we know. No, portcullis, not colors, cullis is portcullis. Portcullis, portcullis. It's it's the metal door um, that comes down uh, in front of a moat. And you've got the drawbridge. So the drawbridge is like the bridge. You can walk across the moat, the big ditch round a castle. You have the drawbridge across it. You can walk across the drawbridge. But if the portcullis is down, it's like a, an iron grid. It just drops. OK. Next time you walk round an old castle, see if you can figure out where the drawbridge is, where the portcullis is, where the moat is. They're the sort of words we learn in school, really. OK, then the next one, precious, precious. Precious. Yeah, good. And then precious. it was very funny, this one, because you put you said poker. So that's the metal poker you can use to poke the fire, the poke. So it's an O sound, poker, poke. To poke. That's it. Poke. No, you wouldn't poke your nose. You pick your nose. Yeah. To pick your nose. Pick it, pick it. And you Poetry, how you, you mention this? <laughs> Don't pick your nose and eat it. <laughs> but you might oh poke somebody. I think you can poke people in uh, Kitely, actually. You can poke them. And people poke each other on Facebook. I don't know if that happens anymore. I always thought it was very rude. <laughs> Then again, this Ibel, no, invisible, invisible. Invisible. Yes. And not too much stress on the in, invisible. Okay. The, the stress invisible. is on invisible. Okay. Invisible. 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 Sounds it better. It. Invisible. That, that's much better, yes. Well done. Good. Okay. And then you get a smiley because you um, corrected yourself. So cautiously, not courteously. Cautiously, courteously. Cautiously, courteously. 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 That's right. I know it looks like court, but when it's in court, uh, in that, you've got curtsy. Court and courteously. Okay. Think, can it be? Can I? Can I take it at a rule? When I see the letter I O U, then I say just A. And when I see the letter E O U, then I say E A. Yes. Courteously. Yeah. Courteously. Yes. Courteously. Courteously. Yeah. And when I see the letter I as cautiously, yeah. then I I, um, I I skip the I out of 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 the uh, pronunciation. Well, it becomes more of a sh and less of a t. Okay. So um, if you were to look for, let me just find find words. Hang on a second. Words containing exactly t s. 
and let's find it okay so if you look at some examples of different words so you've got beauteous then you've got uh, bounteous okay beauteous bounteous and you've got courteous courteous a courteous okay and then when you've got mm -hmm. i o u s then it becomes more of a sh so uh ambitious so it's more the t that is changed okay cautious okay now if you use um if you're struggling with these is it a t or a sh is it an eus or an yus then what you ha can do is use something like word hippo and use a search like word containing words containing and then put in the tius or words containing okay so it takes a bit of work but if you are struggling with when do i say this and when do i say that um, remember there's always going to be an exception but generally you'll find a general rule of tius and shus um, if you look for that kind of search term okay mm -hmm. okay thank okay. you mm -hmm. okay so you got it let's okay. move on um the next two are just phrases and it's just about intonation also very important okay they can hurt us or kill us even i shouldn't wonder that I shouldn't wonder is like, I think, okay? I shouldn't wonder, I believe, or I think, okay? So try it. They can hurt us or kill us even, I shouldn't wonder. Try it. Okay. But um, I can't understand why they put the, uh, um, uh, how is called the, um, uh, the line, the dash. small line, um, the, dash. the dash. Yeah. Just, dash just to, in between just, us and it, it's to show that he's just thinking lots of different thoughts yeah well they could kill us they could hurt us oh my god <laughs> it's not part it's almost the same part of the sentence but using different words and going to extremes so he starts thinking oh they might kill us and they might hurt us and then he suddenly realizes they could even kill us <laughs> oh my god it's just to separate those two thoughts okay yeah. They can hurt us or kill us even. I shouldn't wonder. Okay, good. And then the next one is... Was the pose too long, Lynn? No, I, 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 I mean, I didn't want to make up a pose. <laughs> no, exactly. Us it, or... it, it was fine. It was fine. It was much better than the first time. Yeah? I shouldn't wonder. I just wanted that the reader understand <laughs> what I want to say. Don't worry. Don't worry too much about it, but that was much better. And then the next one it's as real as real it's as real as real so sometimes okay. you might hear somebody saying it's as something as something can be so it's as real as real can be it's so real it couldn't be any realer that's all he's saying so it's as real as real it's as real as real yeah that's it it's just a saying it's just a saying it's as dangerous as dangerous can be <laughs> Okay, very good. Well done. Okay, so we have run out of time. Sorry, Moz, but when I, as you said, you were a little late and I wasn't able to add you to the list. Uh, so from next week, um, we'll be doing from. Okay, uh, from this part of the sentence from page 179, I think. No, no, they said and hastened away. Okay. Yes, quite a few people. What? Okay, let me explain how I usually do it. Um, when the session begins, and as you know, as you say hi to me, I add you to the reading list, and then I work out roughly how many minutes each person will be able to speak. Okay, and if you do come a little bit too late, I can't really add you because I've already allocated the minutes. So um, I hope that's okay. Sorry, but you know, it, it's 
the reading sessions are always a little stricter than the chat sessions. OK. <laughs> Okay, thank you for coming, you will put everybody. Your foot down, Lynn? Sorry, April? You will put your foot down. I'm going to put my foot down, yes. <laughs> 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 Absolutely. You're welcome, Rara. Now, don't forget your corrections and everybody else's corrections are in the forum. If you do think, oh, what was that word? And look it up and practice it, maybe record it. If there's a word that you're struggling with, uh, or a phrase then recording and listening and listening to the um, the corrected version in the YouTube video can be really helpful okay takes a bit of time takes a bit of effort but honestly it's worth it you'll find um, eventually it takes time though don't be in a hurry <laughs> okay thanks a lot for coming uh, I'll be around on the forum any questions you can ask and I'll see you in the next session. Don't forget this karaoke tonight. So if you want to get involved, get onto Discord and come with a song prepared. <laughs> Take care. Bye, Shiny. I hope to see you later. <laughs> bye bye. Take care. The gone too. And where the house had stood, Robert rubbed his eyes and looked again. Yes, the others had wished. There was no doubt about it. And they must have wished that they lived in a castle. For there the castle stood, black and stately and very tall and broad, with battlements and lancet windows and eight great towers. And when the garden and the orchard had been, there were white things dotted like mushrooms. Robert walked slowly on, and as he got near, he saw that these were tents, and men in armor were walking about among the tents, crowds and crowds of them. Oh, said Robert fervently, they have, they've wished for a castle. And it's being besieged. It's just like that sand fairy. I wish we'd never seen the beastie thing. At the little window above the great gateway, across the moat that now lay, where the garden had been but half an hour ago, someone was waving something paid as colored. Robert thought it was one of Sidney's handkerchiefs. They had never been white since the day when he had upset the bottle of combined toning and fixing solution into the drawer where they were. Robert waved back and immediately felt that he had been unwise. For the signal had been seen by the besieging force and two men in steel caps were coming towards him. They had high brown boots on their long legs, and they came towards him with such great strides that Robert remembered the shortness of his own legs and did not run away. He knew it would be useless to himself, and he feared it might be irritating to the foe. So he stood still, and the two men seemed quite pleased with him. By my halidom! said one. A brave valid uh, this. Robert felt pleased at being called brave, and somehow it made him feel brave. He passed over the valet. It was the way people talked in historical romances for the young, and he knew, uh, and uh, he knew, and it was evidently not meant for rudeness. He only hoped he would be able to understand what they said to him. He had not been always able quite to follow the conversation conversation side and you may go and you may go out however much you want to do so. Robert was well running as okay. fast oh, sorry, yeah, that's it. Good. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Too Very much well wish. Too many wish. Yeah.
the many wishes. The many wishes as well. The possibilities <laughs> are endless. I mean, you imagine reading this book as a child, as I did. You become terrified of making any wish. <laughs> Okay, very nicely read. I and guess th this was uh, the purpose. Uh, to, oh to yes, it was. Parents. Most so, yeah. most children's <laughs> stories are, you know, done for a you know, are created to teach children a lesson. <laughs> okay, so there's just the one word, April, um, audacious. Uh, okay, I said audacious. Okay, yeah, audacious. Yeah. You were probably thinking of audacity, the uh, the program. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's <Audacious>. it. <laughs> Does everybody know what audacious means? Have you ever used it in a in a sentence? Yeah, because it's uh, it's from uh, Latin and uh, it means courageous. Yeah, uh, it's a little bit more than courageous. It means being. Um, not risk averse, shall we say. So sometimes in the news you might hear about an audacious robbery. So it's not bravery, but it, it's uh, it's they've done something very bold. OK. Fearless, if you like. Brutal. Mm, Brutal? Not really. It, it can also mean being a little bit naughty, uh, showing lack, lack of respect. But it, it tends to be bold and fearless. OK. Devil may care is a nice one. There can be a, an, a level of insolence about it, absolutely. But devil may care, as in, yeah, oh, um, I don't really have a devil may care attitude, if I'm honest. But some people do, and that they'll do anything. I mean, we were talking about playground equipment today, and then we got on to fairground equipment and um, these amusement parks. And there are amusement park rides I will not go on because I am not audacious, but uh, <laughs> Zom and I think it was Zom and Yuli were like, oh, that looks like fun. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> you never catch me dead on that. <laughs> OK, so basically just willing to take a risk. OK, being willing to take a risk. OK, then, um, yes, fortune favours the brave. <laughs> OK, uh, then the other bit, April, is actually just the intonation in, um, in the sentence. I'll just do my little blurb. <laughs> so welcome to the English book reading session in Kitely. And we're reading Five Children and It. And we're at chapter six. Okay, April, whenever you're ready, if you'd like to start reading. Okay, uh, hi everybody. Um, chapter 6 A castle and no dinner. The others were to be kept in as a punishment for the misfortunes of the day before. Of course, Martha thought it was naughtiness and not misfortune. So you must not blame her. She only thought she was doing her duty. You know, grown-up people often say they do not like to punish you and that they only do it for your own good and that it hurts them as much as it hurts you. And this is really very often the truth. Martha certainly hated having to punish the children quite as much as they hated to be punished. For one thing, she knew what a noise there would be in the house all day, and she had other reasons. I declare, she said to the cook, it seems almost a shame keeping of them indoors this lovely day, but they are that audacious. They'll be walking in with their heads knocked off from some of these days, some of these days, if I don't put my foot down. You make them a cake for tea tomorrow, dear, and we'll have baby along of us soon as we've got a bit forward with our work. Then they can have a good romp with him out of the way. Now, Eliza, come, get on with them beds. Here is ten o'clock nearly, and no rabbit's coat. 
People say that in Kent, when they mean, and no work done. So all the works were kept in, but Robert, as I have said, was allowed to go out for half an hour to get something they all wanted. And that, of course, was the day's wish. He had no difficulty in finding the sand fairy, but the day was already so hot that it had actually, for the first time, come out of its own accord, accord, accord and was sitting in a, sur in a sort of pool of soft, of soft sand, stretching itself and trimming its whiskers and turning its snail's eyes round and round. Ha! It said when it ha! It said when its left eye saw Robert. Okay, so what we've got? Oh, that's strange. Hang on, let me just get rid of that page one six three. Okay, there's a little dash there. So they're not wishing for something. It's something they could wish for. So you'd read it. Then he tried to think what they could wish for. Something that would be amusing indoors. So he's trying to imagine what could they have wished for. And then he's imagining the sort of things they might have wished for. <laughs> do you want to try it? Do, do you get what I mean, April? So uh, it's, it's not um, they could wish for something, but they could wish for. Yes. And th that for yes. something. Uh, yeah, okay. Then he tried to sing what they could wish for, something that would be amusing indoors. Perfect, yes. Okay, so there's a difference to wish for something or what are they going to wish for? Maybe something that would be amusing indoors, okay? And then I just want to clarify that everybody knows what it means when it says to put your foot down. If somebody says to you, no, I'm going to put my foot down now. Any idea? I will finish. I will stop. No, not quite. No, no. So, um, for example, let me think. When I'm in a session, I know that sometimes people would like me to stay for longer especially if they've only just joined, if they've been sort of like an hour late and I go, oh, I'm sorry, I, I've got to go, the session's ending. I know they would like me to stay for longer. Sometimes they ask me to stay for longer, but I have to put my foot down. I have to be firm and say no. Yeah? So it literally means to say no, no, no negotiation. That's it. What I've just said is what's going to happen. OK, I put my foot down. Okay, good. Then um, next person to read today is Eleanor. So, Eleanor, uh, okay. as soon as you can are you... ready. Yeah, I can hear you perfectly. Okay, good. Robert, uh, Robert was running as fast as he could, but when he turned the corner that ought to have brought him within sight of the ar architect's nightmare, the ornamental iron work on the top of the house, he opened his eyes so wide that he had to drop into a walk. For you cannot run with your eyes wide open. Then suddenly he stopped short, for there was no house to be seen. The front garden railings were... I've been looking for you. Where are the rest of you? Not schmust themselves up with those wings, I hope. No, said Robert, but the wings got us into a row, but just like all the wishes are always do. So the others are kept indoors, and I was only let out for half an hour to get the wish. So please let me wish uh, as quickly as I can. Wish away, said the psammeet, twisting itself round in the sand. But Robert couldn't wish away. He forgot all the things he had been thinking about, and nothing would come into his head but little things for himself, like candy, a foreign stamped album, for, or a knife with three blades and a corkscrew. 
He sat down to think better of things that the others would not have cared for, such as a football or a pair of leg guards, or to be able to lick Simkins Minor thoroughly when he went back to school. Well, said the Samit at last, You'd better hurry up with that wish of yours. Time flies. I know it does, said Robert. I can't think what to wish for. I wish you could give one of the others their wish without their having to come here to ask for it. Oh, don't. But it was too late. The summit had blown its, itself out to about three times its proper size, and now it collapsed like a pricked bubble, and with a deep sigh lead, leaned back against the edge of the sand pool, quite faint, faint with the effort. There, it said in a weak voice, it was tremendously hard, but I did it. Run along home, or they are sure to wish or for something silly before you get there. They were quite sure, Robert felt this, and as he ran home, his mind was deeply occupied with the sort of wishes he might find they had wished in his absence. They might wish for rabbits, or white mice, or chocolate, or, find, or a fine day tomorrow, or even, and that was most likely, someone might have said, I do wish to goodness Robert would hurry up. Well, he was hurrying, hurrying up, and so they would have that had their wish, and the day would be wasted. Then he tried to think what they could wish for something that would, uh, that would be amusing indoors. That had been his own difficulty from the beginning. So few things are amusing indoors when the sun is shining 